Hi, I'm Barry. This is Mega City Gaming, and this is the 13th part of the Strontium Dog miniatures game terrain build. I finished painting the terrain and uh, get it on the table. Silver I'm using is uh, Rune Fang Steel, which is like Mithril Silver. I think it used to be called. It's kind of a light, light silver. If I had a uh, silver marker pen, silver sharpie, I'd use that. But I, I did have. I used it so much that it ran out, and I forgot to get more. But they are really good silver. I still have the gold and uh, shining gold and bronze color sharpies, which I use quite a lot. I might use them on this, but not for the edging. might use them on the pipes um, because sharpies are much easier to control and much easier to use in the paintbrush so sharpies for those that don't know are basically marker pens paint pens uh, the silver gold ones are paint pens the the normal sharpies are just uh, ink right Start with the window frame on this side. I want to water that down a bit so we get a bit more coverage because, like I said, MDF drinks paint. A friend of mine said, um, suggested with MDF you should, before you even prime it, before you do anything to it. After you've assembled it and it's raw wood, you should spray it with top coat, which is like a varnish. Spray it with top coat before you start painting it, and then that will seal it, and it won't drink the paint after that. Um, which I, I've tried that before, and it, it did actually work quite reasonably. Um, I haven't done it with these because they're not that big. This is the biggest bit of scenery. They're not that big, so I'm, I'm not worried about my paints. I did use it on the Sarissa Precision Supermarket because that is huge. It's like two by two, two foot by two foot. It's like. 50, 60 centimetres by 60 centimetres or something. Huge. And I, uh, I didn't want it to drink the paint too much because that is a lot of paint. Even though I was using hobby paints mostly, um, I wanted I wanted to seal it before I painted it. So I, I, I used a uh, top coat on that before I painted it. And it worked pretty well, actually. If you want to see what it looked like, uh, I one of my previous videos, Warlord Sarissa Precision unboxing or something like that. I'm not really sure what I called it, but it'll be easy to find. Zombie Supermarket, because it was made for, or it came in the starter box core box of the Warlord zombie game, the name of which has slipped my mind. Right, I'm going to go ahead and paint the rest of the frames and press pause. The framework is done. I did the inside edges of the frames as well. <clears throat> but not inside because there are no frame details inside and I I have freehanded that kind of thing before but it never looks as good as it does like that so I'm going to leave it um, <clears throat> I also did the door I am going to go back and cover up the bits that I uh, mistakenly Obviously, it's not quite easy getting. Oh, 
it's not quite easy getting in there with a paintbrush. So I did get some silver on the door and I'm going to go in and remedy that <coughs> right away. Just a little bit. And luckily I put the, put the paints I used to the side so I know exactly which colour to use to uh, do the corrections. Yeah, just a little bit. Just a little bit. And I actually quite like the silver on the building. It looks quite good. It's good contrast with the other colours. So, I am going to, oops, I'm going to paint this stripe silver too. So it's like aluminium, aluminium. <coughs> and I'll do that right now. Stripe done. There you go. Uh, it looks a bit rough, not like straight line too much uh, but it's going to be sponged and weathered and stuff so don't worry about it don't worry about it. as long as i don't go over the line that's fine yeah right next up we've got these details that i added the ladder the pipe uh, and the pipes inside and the grill on the window we're going to do uh, and this thing inside my letterbox we're going to do all those uh silver but not not bright silver we're going to do like a dark gunmetal gray yeah let's do gunmetal gray this one vallejo gunmetal gray model color all right let's start with the pipes the interior pipes and the interior thing. I'm going to use the uh, slightly bigger brush. Yeah, where are we? Where is it? There it is. Right. So, try not to get any paint on the wall. It's not so easy. If you do, we can uh, go in and correct it. All right. Do the other edge. pipes on the wall and someone's painting the wall assuming they're not a professional they quite often get paint on the pipes because painting around pipes isn't easy especially if you're an amateur like me I, I just painted when I went back to England I did some decorating and I painted walls and there were pipes and stuff and I got some paint on the pipes <laughs> but it didn't matter because it looked good anyway right I'm painting the drain pipe now that I added all these are additions that I made Go and look at a previous video to see how I did that. Um, it kind of, with MDF, MDF is basically two dimensional pieces put together to make a three dimensional bit of terrain. Uh, so I don't 
MDF is awesome, but often if you add a little bit of plastic in this case, which is curved, uh, it makes it look a lot more realistic. Not quite, not like a, you know, like in a pop-up book where everything is made of two-dimensional, two-dimensional shapes slotted together to make a three-dimensional shape. Yeah, it's not quite like that if you add bits to it. There you go, drain pipe or something. Doesn't really matter what it is. It's a sci-fi, isn't it? Now I'm painting the grate. I'm just overbrushing the grate on the window. Don't have to get all the get general coverage. Don't have to get in between all the all up in the grill. Do the inside. Need some more paint. Where's it gone? Should be right next to me. There it is. Right, a bit more paint. Doing the grill, doing the grill, doing the inside of the grill. I did get a bit of wall wall colour paint, wall colour paint on the grill, so we want to paint over that. There we go. Inside, outside, right next. Uh, we want to do the letterbox or locking mechanism. I haven't decided what it is, and to be honest, it doesn't really matter as long as it uh, gives the impression of detail on the inside of the building because there's literally no detail on the inside as it comes in the box. So it's worth adding a little bit. Uh, not too much because you can add obviously furniture, terrain pieces and you can make stuff like a doll's house, you know what I mean? Add stuff to it. I am going to be, I've got loads of stuff from uh, Ainsty Castings, that's a good company for uh, furniture and stuff like that and terrain pieces, scatter terrain. Right, I've done the inside bit. Now let's do, 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 what else we got? We got a ladder somewhere, there it is. Ladder. So like I said, Ainsty Castings, they do really good resin pieces of terrain. Also vehicles as well. All kinds of stuff. So I, I got a load of uh, Ainsty stuff a while ago. There is a video. I'm, I posted the video of an unboxing, and uh, that was before I started painting on video. Although at that time, I did make unboxing videos and then paint it off video and then show pictures of the painted thing because <clears throat> uh, I truly believed at that time no one in their right mind would want to watch me not a great painter paint <laughs> but apparently some people do so that's awesome and uh, I'm very happy about that and I'm very happy to make painting videos Uh, as far as making videos is concerned, painting videos are not that difficult. Uh, as far as, well, terrain painting videos, I think miniature painting videos is going to be a lot more difficult because of the camera angle and you have to get quite close in to see. So I think that will be a challenge. But as far as making videos is concerned, the most hassle... Uh, so far, in my experience, has been 
actual play videos or uh, bat reps because obviously they go on for a long time and editing it I tried editing before and it took a long time so then I, I just put them out without editing and that was fine but they're also very long probably not that interesting right I think that is the ladder done right I've done all the details I've done all the details uh, what else we got we've got uh, we have got the plant pot and the vines to go so uh, plant pot uh, kind of a terracotta colour like a reddy brown which will be this one Vallejo flat brown kind of a reddy brown that would be the plant pot itself and the vines uh, got something special for that something special but anyway let's do the plant pot first shaky 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 how's it looking so far let's put the roof on where's the roof where is the roof it's probably right in front of me can you see it oh, there it is <laughs> right looks all right doesn't it? so far not bad looks a bit new and shiny but that'll be remedied quite soon Okay, I'm going to paint the plant pot. I might have to cut this video into two because it seems to be quite long. I'm not sure. Anyway, I don't want my videos to be more than an hour long if I can help it. Because, eh, you know, people get bored. Anyway, painting the plant pot. Uh, thin brush. So the plant pot is something I added, just a random bit of round plastic basically I, I found in my bits. It was in my bits, all up on my, all up on my, all up in my bits it was. Because um, I thought the front step didn't have enough detail or, or anything really special about it so I wanted to add a bit of detail like someone actually lived or had lived inside this little whatever it is cabin trailer If you add wheels, it'd be a trailer. Um, but in Strontium Dog, there are skimmers and hover technology. So, it uh, might well be able to float. Or probably, more likely, attach a hover capable engine to it and uh, hover it away to the next campsite right I can't quite reach the back of the plant pot but to be honest can't see it so can't see it don't paint it <clears throat> Right, so the plant pot is now a nice ready brown terracotta. Terracotta. <clears throat> Although the terracotta warriors in China are more of a grey colour. Slate, they look like slate, but they're, all, they're made of uh, terracotta or clay. Right, now the vines. Um, I'm going to go for... 
What was I going to make? This colour? Nope. Light. More light than that. What have I got? Um, kind of grey. Stone grey. Or zombie flesh. Writing flesh. Might go for stone grey. Because they're like all dried up and dead. Kind of thing. So I'm going to paint them like they're dried up and dead. Withering, because they are withering. Or green. No, nope. withered. Withered. Shake this, shake this, map it up. So this is Stone Grey, Vallejo Stone Grey model colour. Come on. Do, 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 do. Right, I didn't put so many vines on here. I didn't want it to look like decorations. I wanted it to look like vines. Right, so I do the plant pot ones first. So, because this is very organic detail, there's a lot of uh, bends and twists in it. I will go in with a wash on this little detail bit, just to bring out the detail a bit more. So that I made sure that the vines went all the way into the pot. Vines, if they are vines, uh, they might be uh, carnivorous plants of some description, like a guard dog in front of the house. You know, like some people have guard dogs. Some people have geese, because geese can be quite vicious. Actually, I used to know a guy who lived in a caravan, much like this one, little cabin, in the woods, and he had two or three geese. And uh, it would be quite treacherous visiting him because the geese. Right. What goes in there? The geese would attack anyone that came near. So I used to keep my distance and shout, Oi! I can't remember his name now. Oi! Let's call him Oi for a minute. Anyway, how's that? That looks alright so far. Yeah, vines coming out. Guard plants. Venus human traps. Now I'm doing the vines on the support. I was tempted to do more, but I didn't want them to look like tinsel, like Christmas decorations, you know. Because, you know, if I did them, did twisty vines and all the supports, it wouldn't look like vines, it would look more like garlands, as they say in some locations in the world. Tinsel, as we say in England. Tried getting tinsel last year for work. No I knew what I was talking about. Obviously English being their second language. 
right, to explain what tinsel was the most commonly used Christmas decoration on earth and it's not available in the shops here uh, but they do have Christmas trees and stuff anyway whatever you don't care about that you care about this I'm painting the vines it's not so easy getting the whole thing because like I said it, it twists around the support so it's not easy getting getting in all the angles painting painting the whole thing but if you can't see it don't paint it right I'm getting there I'm getting, certainly certainly getting there there's no doubt about the fact that I'm getting there and I will once I've finished it let it dry go in uh, I'll probably do that with the weathering as well I'll probably go in on the vines with a uh, when I'm doing the weathering step which will be quite soon because I think I've nearly done the base coating of this <clears throat> I've got a little bit of grey on the uh, support so I will have to go back and correct that not a big deal that's why we have all our paints to the side so they're easy to find because I am gonna make mistakes I am going to overbrush overflow get paint on bits that I shouldn't get paint on and it doesn't matter in the undercoating stage base coating undercoating I always get those two mixed up <laughs> certainly getting there enthralling stuff enthralling stuff yeah just noticing bits of the bottom of the vine that I've missed holding it at weird angles There we go. I pretty much painted it the same colour as it was <clears throat> when it was raw green stuff. It was kind of a creamy colour. Modelling putty, I should say. So I probably could have just put it on there and left it. But, but, if you don't paint it then the wash that you add you apply later will not adhere very well to raw green stuff because green stuff is kind of slip slime not slimy slippery smooth that's the word smooth you wanna right that's it that's the vine done look at that whoa nice right we're gonna let that dry and then we'll uh what's this let me think well, i'm just going in and painting the wood i uh, got a little bit of vine color onto the wood underneath so i'm just going in and correcting that Going a little bit correcting that. Yeah, that's it. A little bit there. While I'm doing that, I am cogitating furiously about what the next stage is going to be. 
Right. <clears throat> okay. Next. Next up, I'm going to do the sign on the front. This one. So we already have a no muties sign. I don't want to repeat that, uh, but same kind of style. Um, I'm going to probably write, let me think, um, beware of the plant. Yeah, because this is, or it was, a uh, danger, dangerous plant. Um, I'm not very good at freehand painting, definitely not very good at freehand painting. So I'm going to go in uh, first with this. It's a Gundam marker. What's it called? Real touch marker. Gundam marker for plastic model kits. Uh, this, is, this is brown. It's got a very fine tip at one end. Um, I'm going to go in and write it first and then I can paint over it. I'm, I'm worried that I'm going to run out of space or not get the, uh, not get the, not get it right. So let's think. Be, yeah, beware of the plant. So beware at the top. If you can see this, right, got to get it right and want you to see it at the same time. <laughs> it's not easy, mate. Not easy. Right. Okay. Alright, so we've got beware. You see that? Beware. Of the plant. Right, there we go. Beware of the plant. I might actually leave it like that. It's not so, not so obvious though. It's a bit too dark. Beware of the plant. Shall I paint over it like that? It's going to be pretty difficult, but doable. Let's do it. Let's do it. If I screw it up, I can just paint over it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Who dares wins, Rodney? Who dares wins? He who dares wins. So I believe I used writing flesh, the GW writing flesh for this one. I'm going to use the same one because I like that nice bright colour. So we're doing this first before we weather because we we're going to weather over the top. He who dares wins. Right. It's the letter B that might be the problem because right. uh, try not to get the strokes all together so it's one big block of colour trying to avoid that I'm gonna make the strokes clear you can't see what I'm doing apologies for that you can see how I'm doing though I will give you regular updates as I progress There we are. Beware, I might go over that E again because it's not so clear. some of those again. B 
beware. Alright. Of Beware of the. Alright, that's how we're looking so far. Beware of the. This one should be easier because it's the letters are much bigger. Plant. There we go. Beware of the plant. Right. Back to the plant. Beware of the plant. Plant's dead. No, it's not. Because I just went to England and I bought this barbed bracken from Games Workshop, £15, for a huge amount of kind of death world, carnivorous plant <clears throat> type scorpion shaped bracken y things. <clears throat> Uh, so we're gonna <coughs> we're gonna retro retrofit this into the plant pot, possibly on the vine as well. Uh, let's see what we got. Uh, I don't want it to be sticking out too much because it'll break off. Um, so we have we do want to use some of these uh, scorpiony bits. Um, these aren't actually the same plastic as miniatures, so I am going to use Gorilla Glue to stick that on and then go in and paint it, or paint it and then use Gorilla Glue. But first, let's see what we're going to add. Let's use, let's pull out one of these big ones. Let's pull out a big one and then we can chop it up into smaller parts. This is kind of like soft plastic. <clears throat> um, not resin. And not the same plastic as GW miniatures. Right. Okay, so I've cut this one off. It's a big multi part thing. It is soft plastic, so it might. might Might be stable, might not snap too much too easily. Um, I do want it to be more kind of going to bend it so it's drooping a lot more over the sides of the plant pot rather than sticking up. Alright, let's have a look now. That looks alright, isn't it? That's a bit better. And I'll just stick that on. Um, stick it, then paint it. Paint it, then stick it. Right. Uh, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to paint the uh, stems first, the same colour as the vines, which were, what was it, stone grey? Yeah, stone grey, just paint the stone grey. Uh, just paint them, and then the leaves are pretty easy to paint because they're bigger. The stems might not be so easy to get to without making a big mess of it. Where did I put it? Where did I put it? Found it right in front of me. Right, so I'm just going to paint the stems of this kind of grey, same colour as the the uh, vines, and then we we'll go for some kind of hideous 
triffid kind of bright tropical colour kind of like that for the leaves yeah I'm just painting the stems I might paint the underneath of the leaves while we're here because they won't be so easy to get to so just finish off painting the stems should have really undercoated it but uh, base coated it undercoated it primed it that's it but yeah this is uh i should have oh uh, ideally i would have stuck it on there two weeks ago when i started it anyway whatever so the stems are done <clears throat> so underneath of the leaves let's decide on the color so looking at ones that at games workshop have done got yellowy orangey greeny might go for an orange orange let's do orange and we'll, we'll obviously go over it with a uh, wash so what orange have we got we've got uh, fire dragon bright and we've also got if I can find it blazing orange kind of ready and a thing so I might let's do let's do this color first and then we can highlight with this one maybe uh, so I'm doing the underneath first underneath 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 right and because it's so small it's not so easy to uh, to paint because I have to hold it so it's not easy to paint can't really paint the whole thing in one one go we have to let it dry yeah that's looking good though look at that wow quite a lot of awesome detail right I'm gonna let that dry so I did paint the underside I also did the top side because yeah why not um now I'm gonna stick it in here Whoop. like so with a bit of gorilla glue so it will look like that B yeah bit of gorilla glue that hold it in <clears throat> so basically super glue anyway gorilla glue is basically super glue um, blob of glue this type this type of gorilla glue is uh, gel type but you can use where's the lid I'm losing everything today there it is uh, it's also because I have jet lag but anyway this type of glue is the gel type of super glue there we go it is right I am gonna add some of the same leaves to maybe the vines uh, and they do have like individual leaves not individual leaves but like small kind of bushels of leaves like two leaves and so on so I'm gonna gonna stick a couple of those on um, let me see let's have a small one all right so a small one very small there it is and let's get another one of a different design this one there we go right 
there aren't any noticeable mold, mold lines on these which is good although where I cut it off the sprue quite roughly there's a little bit of thing but eh, it looks like a, a natural thing anyway right so while that's drying we're gonna these have got quite long stems so I might cut the stem stick it on yeah, I'm going to cut the stem. So, cut. Let's do one for the moment because if it if it's crap, I haven't ruined two bits of leaf. Right. Facing up or facing down? I guess facing down because the top of the leaf is where the sun. It's basically the sun collector, the photosynthesis centre. Right. And we want it not to break off so easily. Right, that'll do. <clears throat> so again, we're going to go in with the paint, paint it first. Get that out of the way. Put it here, because if I put it on here, I'll never be able to find it again. I should really get rid of this newspaper and put you know, cutting mat or something in there, then it'll be easier for you to see and easier for me to see. Yeah. Right, well, uh, stone grey, that was it. Stone grey for the stem of the plant. Stone grey. Stem, stem, stem. Do the underneath, even though that won't be seen. But you never know. Don't really know what can be seen until it's stuck on. That's it, stone grey. Oh, don't put it on there, you idiot. You'll never find it again. Right, done the stone grey, now let's do the orange. So like I said, we're going to base it with blazing orange and we'll go back and highlight it with fire dragon once we've given it a wash. Because we do want the leaves to be poppy, we want them to stick out, stand out. Beware of the plant, yes, beware of the plant. Right, start with the underneath. Da, da, da. Yeah, paint that. I might as well paint the top as well. And then we'll let it dry and go back and do the other leaf. Because I have to hold it somewhere, don't I? Right, let's let that dry. Right, so I painted painted that one and I stuck it on, I went ahead and stuck it on and um, I decided that there are more likely to be leaves on the front or this side than inside because the sun will be there so plants don't grow leaves where there's no sun <coughs> also <coughs> um, so this one I'm going to stick down the bottom here yeah, it's always worth dry fitting so before you apply any glue just so you know what it's going to look like yeah so I'm going to stick one there We're using Gorilla Glue give it a shake Stick it on, and I, I'm pretty sure they're more likely to be leaves lower down than higher up because higher up is the exploration part of the vine. So once it's established that there is sun, it pops out a leaf. Yeah, that's how 
I imagine vines work. Stick it on. There we go. One there, one there. That looks a okay. Could put another one on, but I think that'll do. So we know it's the same plant. The plant has escaped the pot. Not escaped, but uh, outgrown the pot and uh, vines climbing up the side. Yeah. So we know it's the same plant. Awesome, it's going to look really cool when it's finished, when it's painted properly. Right, what is next? I think we can start weathering now because all the details are done. Weathering. Weathering indeed, yes. I have my chocolate ilo. Craft paint. Yeah, cheap, uh, kind of ready brown colour. I have a bit of pluck foam, a bit of sponge, um, and a clean palette. And I changed my water as well, so I just cleaned up a little bit. So here we go. We're going to start with the floor, the interior floor. Yeah, start with that, and then see what happens. Let's make it up as I go along. As always, not so much planning involved in my paints, my paint schemes. Um, I do stop and think for a bit, but <clears throat> I don't have real, I have kind of ideas, but not shit. That was the door, perfect timing. I just just got paint on the sponge. You really don't want this sponge to dry out because you can't use it then. Right, so here we go. Sponging, just like that. Don't, you don't need it uniform, you don't need it to be the same. Um, And because it's a sponge, is kind of random points of colour. And you can go heavy on some bits and light on others. Just press down heavier to get more colour. Press down lighter to get less colour. Try not to get fingerprints on it. There you go, and that takes away the fact that I didn't give it two coats. I didn't need to give it two coats because I knew I was going to go in with this and weather it up. And so you can't, you don't notice the black showing through because now it looks grubby and dirty and rusty and like that. Right, that's the floor done. That was quick, wasn't it? Right, next. <clears throat> Make sure the lid's closed before you start shaking it. Had that before. Shook up a can of white paint and uh, one of these, and yeah, white paint all over the living room floor. Panic ensued, but luckily I was able to wipe it off before it dried. Um, another time I had a palette of paint. Some paint on my palette silver i think it was like kind of like that and i went to answer the door like i did just now come back and there's cat shaped silver footprints all over the dinner table <laughs> that didn't come off that uh, but we got a new table not because of that but we ended up getting a new table anyway right now i'm going to do the in interior walls interior walls obviously you can't reach uh, everywhere you don't really need to either as long as you get a general impression that 
it's grubby, rusty, filthy, neglected, abandoned. Uh, kind of paint, not paint the uh, raw material showing through. Whatever that is, synthy crete, plus crete. Uh, I know Games Workshop copies all these names from uh, 2000 AD, uh, but most of the writers for Games Workshop started out in 2000 AD or do also do work for them at the same time, so that's why there's a huge crossover. And to, to be honest. Originally, most of the stuff from 40k, anyway, was lifted from 2000 AD or other things like aliens, you know, like Tyranids, aliens, Imperial Guard, aliens, or uh, what's that alien? The, 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 the film Starship Troopers, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Space Marines, Space Corps, Judge Dredd, and so on. Anyway, even the Land Raider, Land Raider and Judge Dredd came first. Anyway, whatever. Right, that's the ins inside, as you can see. It's looking pretty messed up. Yeah, random, messed up, dirty, grubby. That's not the only weathering we're going to do. So fear not, let's do the external walls. Make sure it's shut. Sponging, chocolate sponging. Right. Uh, so you want to get rust on the ladder because the it's metallic round the windows because they're kind of metallic as well and uh, low down because the metallic band right there yeah and not uniform because rust doesn't uh, is not uniform, it doesn't grow the same or it, it, it uh, spreads at different rates in different places for many reasons, environment, thickness of paint, material, uh, humidity, uh, da, 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 da. anyway. Yeah, make sure I don't miss any sides, get it on all four sides because otherwise, otherwise it'd be like, oh, that side's super clean and that's the rest of it isn't. <clears throat> yeah, sometimes you get a big, you press down a bit too hard, you get a big blob, but you can go back and spread it out a bit. Don't go side to side though. Dab it, dab it. So it looks like a, a a concentrated bit of rust that kind of spreads out. Right, let's do these sides. This is going to be a little bit more difficult because I stuck the plants in. D -d -d. Yeah, let's try and get. Yeah. Smaller sponge might be an idea, but yeah, it's alright. Get some on the step. Although it might not be rusted, it's certainly worn from years of people coming home late from the pub falling asleep on the front step 
with the key hanging out the door. Yeah, you've been there too. Yeah, right. There you go. Front, side, back, other side. Yeah. Right, might do a little bit more inside. Uh, because the paint scheme inside the walls are quite bright so might be an idea to uh, get a bit less bright there we go right now it looks worn Right, that's before it dries out we need to wash this. So stick it dip it in the pot, squeeze it out. Imagine you're squeezing soap out of a shower sponge or whatever blah, 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 blah. washing up liquid sponge or whatever. Um yeah, right, get most of it off. Doesn't matter if there's a little bit you're never going to get all of it out. You don't want it drying hard because then you can't use it again. Right, chocolate sponge. I do like a bit of chocolate sponge, me. Wow. Right, now that's not the only way we're going to do. We're going to let that dry for a little bit and then we're going to add Tamiya Weathering Master. So we've got, uh, I've got a load of different colours of this. This one has soot and rust. We're going to go for the soot because it's black. And we're going to apply it with a bit of tissue. This does come with an applicator, which is like a makeup thing, I guess. Um, these break quite easily. They're not very good. They're right for miniatures because you want something small. But for terrain like this, I just use a bit of tissue because it, uh, it's a larger surface area, more coverage, <clears throat> and so on. Right, I did notice that I missed chocolate sponging here and here. Uh, might not be too much of an issue. I'm going to go in with the soot first and see how that looks. If it stands out a bit too much, I will... Uh, I will go in and uh, add some chocolate sponging to it. All right, I'm using using tissue, using a tissue. All right, we're going to add some soup to the roof. Right, that doesn't show up. Nope, doesn't show up. <clears throat> Try a bit more. That's got to show up, hasn't it? Ah, it's a bit better. Right, actually using a tissue wasn't such a good idea because it's torn. So... I am. Yeah, this is why. Uh, this is why we uh, rehearse. Yeah. <laughs> Not. <clears throat> I'm going to use the original stick. See how that does. <clears throat> kind of like a spongy makeup thing. Yeah, that works. Although it's not getting much coverage. We want it to be kind of patchy anyway. I didn't add any chocolate sponging to the roof parts as they are, I don't want it to look all the same. Different materials weather different ways, you know. And the roof is definitely not the same material as the rest of it. 
Alright, just random bits. Bit in the middle. Bit more. You don't get quite so much coverage with the stick. There we are. But yeah, it's, it's looking, it's getting there. Oh, don't forget these parts. When I top coat it, the uh, it doesn't show up so much the weathering powder. It uh, kind of doesn't disappear, but it kind of gets absorbed or something. So, although it could be quite stark when you uh, put it on, when you top coat it, <clears throat> it'll be a lot less obvious. All right. Okay, that's the roof pretty much done. Do the roof parts on the main model. I'm sure I used tissue on another model and it was fine, but the uh, these parts are card, rough, very thin MDF or card or something, I don't know. and they're a lot rougher, <clears throat> so the tissue isn't strong enough for that. Maybe like a kitchen paper or something would be better. Or even a sponge. Right. Do the other one. I'm going to go in and put some oil stain on the inside and outside and stuff. Just I do the roof differently. Yeah. There you go. Bit of sit on that one, bit of sit on there, yeah, good night. Now let's do let's get oil stain. So another different pack oil stain comes in a different uh, set. So so oil stain is more grey than uh, soot. Soot is is black. This is more grey. So let's, <coughs> let's do the walls with some oil stain. Doesn't show up so much. Probably show up more on the inside. So other people on the internet have done really very weathered up buildings and they look awesome. And I have no idea how to do that. So maybe you should watch them. <laughs> but, you know, I'm having a go with what I've got. There we go. You see that? Not too much, but it, it makes it less flat, even though it might not be so obvious. It's not like, oh, there's a big oil stain. It does just make the, uh, the wall look less plain even if it's not so noticeable put some under there some under there put some on the old beware of the plant sign and if you get you get it too much you can just wipe it off Yeah, oil stain, right. Let's keep applying that. I'm going to do all the outside. I'm going to pause it while I do that. So as you can see, I did the door with oil stain, and that looks great. That looks dusty, and yeah, that looks really good. Yeah. Uh, I've done all the sides uh, a little bit. It doesn't. It's not so obvious, but like I said, it, it adds to the general feeling. I'm going to do the inside now, that should be 
a lot more visible because the uh, walls on the inside are pretty obvious, uh, pretty bright, sorry. Uh, there we go, right, so, can you see that? Yeah, that's a lot more, it's a lot more obvious. Yeah. You don't want any stark, any bare walls really you want to get. <clears throat> Not every square inch, obviously, but you don't want big pieces of unweathered wall staring at you. Right, I've done that one. Let's do this one. front wall and the door and then I'll show you what it looks like right okay so I added another layer of, of weathering basically to to the uh, general walls right so i finished with the weathering right let's put the floor in and see what that looks like when it's all put together because it might look crap that looks all right Look at that, Whoa. and the plants at the front, how about that, I reckon, I reckon that's done, right, put the roof on, see how that looks, right, although I didn't chocolate sponge here, it still looks alright with the oil stain, or the soot, sorry, <clears throat> how about the back, that looks alright too, yeah. well, I can call that finished. Finished? Not finished. You know me. Always premature of the finishing. Right. Ink, not ink. Wash. I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade. You can use, if you don't have this, you can use watered down brown paint. Dark brown watered down. Very watered down paint. Consistency of milk, as they say on the internet. Um, so basically three to one four to one something like that water to paint um better too much water better too weak a solution than too thick otherwise you're just painting brown paint on it which will be terrible right i'm using this brush which is my go for brush go to brush for pretty much any dirty jobs and i'm going to apply agrax to the plant and the vines. Right, let's do it. So get some on my palette. Some on the palette. Okay, now applying. Now you see the detail. Detail is definitely coming out now. Get the underneath if possible. Actually, I'm going to do the whole plant pot itself as well so it's, it doesn't look like I've just applied a wash to it. Right, the floor isn't stuck in so it keeps popping up. Um, I will be sticking that in momentarily. Like I said, finished, 
not finished. <laughs> right, get some more. Finished, not finished. Right, I'm just adding uh, Agrax Earth, sh Earth Shade. Agrax Earth Shade to the vines on the support. And unfortunately, you can't see what I'm doing because angles, light. All that kind of thing are conspiring against you and me. So there you go. Right. There we go. That's awesome. So you can, now you can see the details in the twisting vines a lot more. And on the uh, plants, the on the leaves of the uh, of the plant shrubbery. Yeah, believe me it does look much more cool. And um, I will be taking pictures and uh, showing you pictures when it's dry I'm gonna highlight it with this so Wait a moment, please. While that's drying, I'm going to stick the floor into the building. I'm going to use uh, PVA glue, white glue, wood glue. Uh, wood glue doesn't stick plastic, but it adheres enough so the floor won't move because it's not like uh, some of these other pieces. It, it will pretty much stay in there. We're not going to move it around too much anyway. So. Um, we were, yeah. Think, man, think. It's stored upside down. It's going to pop out. There we go. But anyway, we're going to use all that glue anyway. I My glue spreader is elsewhere. So I'm going to just use my finger. Get some on the corners so it doesn't warp too much and stick up at the corners. Right, what I'll have to do There we go. Right. And when that dries that should uh, adhere quite nicely. It won't like I said you can't really stick plastic to with uh, PVA, but uh, it should stop it moving around at least. I mean, I could just pop it out if I want to change it. It, it because it doesn't stick too much. I could just pop it out, change it. Right, that's still drying. Right, it's dry now. For dry brushing the leaves of the plant, I'm going to use. Uh, Fire, Dragon Bright, Bright Orange, basically a lighter shade than the original. Right, so I'm using a Citadel small flat dry brush, which is about uh, just under half an inch wide, so actually not small. Okay, a little bit of paint on there, wipe most of it off, yeah. Stick it on, wipe it off, then onto the cloth or tissue paper, kitchen roll probably is better. But I'm, I'm using the cloth I liberated from the kitchen a while ago. <clears throat> right, and then just go over it like that. Try and go against the grain, which means the segments go left to right. I'm brushing up to down. And yeah, it's made a little bit of difference. It's not so obvious, but the general 
the general uh, effect, the overall effect makes makes the detail stand out a lot more than it did otherwise. Yeah, so it's not obvious. Oh, it's been dry brushed, uh, but it just makes it stand out a bit more. Brings out the detail. Um, right, now, I think that really is it. That is it, I'm finished. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment below. There will be more.